and he was taken out from the party. How can you assure me if one person's been taken out from your party? How can you be sure so about the Kashmir issue? An issue has been going on for 70 years. In a Kish, you know, many thousands, millions of people have been massacred in Kashmir. But it's very easy to talk here on the right. I would like to know what is your narrative. There's many questions been, uh, been you know, put up from the stand, uh, in the audience. What is the narrative? What are your future plans? The Labour Party is easy to get elected, but then again, we have we have same speeches after five years. Also, to speak for lots and lots of my colleagues, we have written to the Foreign Secretary. We have published. Uh, statements <coughs> publicly to the Foreign Secretary urging them to, uh, at the time it was, I mean, to be honest, we've had a few Foreign Secretaries in the time that this has been going on, uh, but both uh, uh, and the Prime Minister, and um, they have, uh, the British government have been challenged directly, not just from the Labour side, although this is always an issue, issue that Labour MPs are there to speak uh, on. Because we have been in this battle for so long, uh, certainly in Birmingham, uh, with our communities. Um, but this is by no means the first time that we are speaking about Kashmir. There have been conferences, there have been uh, rallies, there have been huge efforts to put pressure, not just publicly, but also behind the scenes with civil servants in the Foreign Office, uh, speaking uh, in Foreign and Commonwealth questions. There is all sorts of things that are going on all of the time, as well as trying to speak to people directly from both Pakistan and India. Uh, and that has all been going on. Um, but we are currently facing the wall of it is a bilateral issue, which doesn't answer the question of uh, that was asked about citizenship. It doesn't ask, answer the question about what uh, we can push for the United Nations to do and actually what we will all do going forward. Um, because the truth is I could sit here and lie to you and say, I'm going to give you the moon on a stick and we'll get this solved by, and if we get a Labour government that this will absolutely... That, the, the reality is, is that while you don't hold power, and currently, certainly as a Labour politician, we, the power we hold is to raise our voices and to represent those we, um, who we represent in our communities. But we have got to move the dial in the British Parliament from the bilateral to the multilateral, and we have got to move the dial when we send our British people to New York to Strasbourg, when British people are representing us on those world stages, be it the European Union for as long as we've got it, uh, and or uh, the United Nations. We need to be making sure that we are moving the dial beyond the idea of it being a bilateral issue. Now, like I said, the temperature is rising not only because of the issue around human rights, the temperature is rising because of as Liam has talked about very clearly, the issue around the potential for conflict between two and, as Liam said, three nuclear powerhouses. Um, I, I don't ever want to sit here and say that I'm glad that the temperature is rising and that things are bad for those people because if we could undo it, we would. But there has been a change. And in change is opportunity to move the dial. And so we must use the disquiet that you all have and the pain that and suffering that is all being built to move that dial. It has to be for something. And so we have to push and continue to push for not just us, but other countries that we are friends with to be joining us in that. And that is what we will have to do. But I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, you know, a vote for Labour means self-determination for Kashmir, because that wouldn't be true. But it is certainly a step towards a, a party that has always, and um, at past at our conference, um, statements about what we will do going forward with Kashmir. On the issue of, uh, I won't dodge the difficult question, on the issue of Roger Godseth, um, who has been the me Member of Parliament here for uh, five terms. Well, we're going to say five years, then I was thinking he's been around a lot longer than that, pretty much my entire life. Um, but you did say terms. 
Um, but the reality is, is that Roger, God said, we have a, a democracy in the Labour Party where members get to select who they want to stand. And the members in Roger Godsiff's area said, said that they did not wish for him. It was not uh, just, uh, sorry to use this phrase, a unilateral decision <laughs> made by the Labour Party. It, he, what, he faced a democratic vote and the members in his area voted that they wanted him to stand for his selection. So why However, would he get selected again? They, if, he get, well, if he gets elected again, then he will be a democratic representative of these people. And on the issue uh, of you, you saying that he, he stood up for those families, the reality is, is that we have equalities law in this country and equalities law in this country protects every single person in this room in one way or another. And we allow ourselves to be divided on which lines we can and can't be stuck up for. We will end up in a grave situation where none of us are protected. And so we have to make sure that in this country where people are marginalised, even when they are marginalised by the Prime Minister, that there is a voice and a law that protects them. Thank you.